Hello everyone, I am Harsimrit and I welcome you to the session The Importance of Body Language. Body Language How does the body speak? Like any spoken language, body language has words, sentences and punctuation. Each gesture is like a single word and one word may have several different meanings. It's a whole field. And today, we'll try to understand something about it. According to the social anthropologist Edward T. Hall, in a normal conversation between two persons, less than 35% of the social meaning is actually transmitted by words, which means that at least 65% is conveyed through the body channel or the non-verbal channel. It's very important to understand body language. First of all, it's important for effective communication. It can help us make a greater impact on people. It can help us understand the other person better. And also, it's important if we want to avoid offending others. At times, we may have habits or mannerisms which we don't realize are offensive. So let us examine how the body communicates from the head down to the toes. Body language can be divided into four parts. The face, the face is the most expressive part of the body and your facial expression tells us a lot about how you're feeling. The eyes. It's a well-known fact that the eyes are the mirror of the soul. They can tell us what you're thinking. Next, hand gestures. You have to remember that there are open hand gestures and closed hand gestures. And finally, the posture or the way we sit, stand, walk or move.
It's an important part of non-verbal communication. It can tell us a lot about your character. Let us start with the most expressive part of the body, the face. Facial expressions reflect emotions, feelings, attitudes a lot. Let us look at the face on the screen. This person is happy. You can make out by his wide grin. The next face, take a look at it. She does not seem to be very happy. In fact, she's got a smirk on her face, which means it's an openly contemptuous expression. The third face. Now this person is angry. You can make out by his eyes and the mouth. The next face. Now this lady is happy as well. That's a really infectious smile. The next gentleman. Now this person is looking depressed. He looks like he's going to cry. has a dreamy look on her face and seems to be thinking about something else. So these are some examples of how facial expression can tell us a lot about a person. Next. Let's talk about hands. Hands are also a very important part of body language because they convey a lot. How many of us shake hands when we meet? How do you greet people? Do you fold your hands together and say Namaste? That's the Indian way of doing it. However, handshaking is a form of greeting in most Western cultures. It's also becoming increasingly popular in India. I think we should know how to shake hands well. It will be useful in life. When you shake hands, your handshake should be firm. It should not be a loose handshake. The arm should be fully stretched and not held close to the body.
the soft handshake is not appreciated in professional life specially. So take a look at the picture. This is a firm handshake. So when somebody offers you his hand, hold the hand firmly, shake it once or twice and leave it. Now in case of meeting a lady, gentlemen, shake hands only if she is the first to initiate the gesture. Some girls may not want to shake hands. Let's just be gentlemen there. And yes, your handshake should be just right. It should not be too tight or too hard or too loose. There are some more hand gestures that we should understand. Look at the person in the picture. His hands are outstretched, his palms are held outwards. Now what does this convey? It's an open palm gesture and a palms up gesture which has a positive impact on people. It's effective in making amends or making a sale. Combined with outstretched arms, the open palm shows acceptance, openness and trustworthiness. Now suppose you keep your palms downwards. Look at the picture again. This person has palms pointing downwards. It shows confidence, but it also shows rigidity. And it's not that positive a gesture. Now let's look at the picture again. You'll see a clenched fist in the picture. Clenched fists usually show aggression. And clenched fists with thumbs tucked in indicate discomfort and anxiety. Take a look at the picture again. The hand on the heart. conveys a person's desire to be believed or accepted. If I speak with my hand on my heart, I am trying to convince you that I am telling the truth. Though intended to communicate sincerity, it doesn't necessarily mean honesty. Chopping movements are not very positive. Take a look at the picture again. Chopping is for emphasis. A person who chops has made up his mind and is not likely to change it. Similarly, finger pointing is not positive as well. It shows arrogance in your part. It shows that you've made up your mind and you're not going to listen. So I would not do this when I speak to people. Now let's move on to another important part of the body, the legs and feet. Take a look at this person and observe her body language where her legs and feet are concerned.
she is pointing with her toes. Can you see that? Now that's not considered respectful to the person you're speaking with. Now take a look at this person. Can you see her feet up on that piece of furniture? Putting your feet up on a desk or some other piece of furniture is again casual and very disrespectful. Now let's take a look at her again. She's sitting cross-legged. Chonkadi maar ke baithi hai. Now that's considered casual. You may sit like that at home, but certainly not in your professional place or in your schools or colleges. Now finally, look at her again. She's tapping her feet. if she was listening to music in her own free time that would be all right but not while you're taking an interview or speaking to your teachers or your bosses so with this we know what not to do with our legs and feet a lot of our gestures tend to become quite casual and we don't think about it now let's make it a point to be more correct with our legs and feet we need to be very careful about another part of the body the eyes eye contact is very important always maintain eye contact with the person you're speaking to look at the picture Now this person is looking at you while she talks to you. That's called good eye contact. Remember, eye contact does not mean staring. Please do not look up or down or sideways while communicating. Let's look at this person again. Now this is very poor eye contact. Maintaining proper eye contact shows confidence and honesty. Poor eye contact shows dishonesty or lack of confidence. and we don't want to give that impression now let's move on to some more typical body gestures and postures let's look at what meaning they convey Now look at this person again. If the listener has a different opinion than yours, the non-verbal signs would be congruent with the verbal sentences. that is they would match or be consistent this posture shows that the person is disagreeing with you he may say i agree but if he sits in this manner it means that he doesn't telling a lie is not easy because your body language gives you away if a 5 year old child tells a lie to her parent the mouth will be deliberately covered with both hands immediately afterwards let's look at the person in the picture Even 
even as you grow up, it's not all that easy to tell a lie. The hand tends to move somewhere near the mouth or you tend to touch your nose immediately after telling a lie. So everybody, let's keep that in mind. We know that it's not good to tell a lie and honesty is always the best policy. Uh, let's also keep in mind that if we do tell a lie, a person who's attuned to reading body language can catch us. Now I want you to take a good look at the person in the picture. you'll notice her rubbing her palms together. Rubbing the palms together is a way in which people communicate expectations. But it does not always give a very positive message. Now take a look at this posture. The person in the picture has the fingertips together. Now this is the know-it-all posture. This is frequently used when a person feels superior. It's the know-it-all attitude. Suppose you're taking an interview, please don't sit in this manner. It will not create a good impression. Next, your posture also indicates a lot about you as a person. Now take a look at the person here. You'll notice her standing straight with her hands clasped behind her back. This is a superiority gesture. It shows a lot of confidence. How many of you have seen Mughal Azam, the classic Indian film? You'll notice Emperor Akbar walking like this, walking very straight with his hands behind his back. But then he was Emperor Akbar. In his time and place, he was superior to everybody. However, Nowadays, a person walking with that sort of a posture would hardly give a good impression. He would appear to be arrogant. And if you keep your hands behind your back, the palm of one hand clasping the elbow of the other arm tightly. This hand gripping wrist gesture is a signal of frustration, an attempt at self-control. So if you're really feeling frustrated about something, you tend to stand with that posture. We've heard such a lot about poor body language or bad body language. I've told you a lot about what all you should not be doing. But what is it that you should be doing? Let's take a look at some signs of interest. Very useful when you take an interview. When you're sitting at a table, your arms should be on the table and your hands should be relaxed. While you speak to somebody else, nodding your head shows interest. 
take a look at the person in the picture. Yeah, she's interested in listening to me. We should maintain eye contact while talking and we should not look here and there. Take a look at her again. Hand movement can be distracting while you're listening. So we should make minimum use of the hands while listening. Keep your hands in a relaxed position when the other person is talking. When you're talking, you can use your hands and remember with open-handed gestures. Signs of a disinterest. Leaning back. Yes, take a good look at the lady in the picture. Clear sign of disinterest. She doesn't care what I'm saying. Also talking too much in between. When I try to put across my point, I get interrupted by her. Shaking legs. Let's take a look at that. That shows distraction. Moving your eyeballs to the left, right, up or down, it shows extreme impatience. And there's another gesture which is rather negative, arms folded at the chest. It's a defensive stance. It shows me that you don't care or it shows a lack of confidence. You're hugging yourself. So when we go in for that all important interview, we must make sure that our body language is correct. Our handshake should be good, the firm handshake. We should maintain eye contact with the interviewer. We should sit in an upright position. lean forward to show interest. Your legs should be firmly on the ground. The boys should keep them very slightly apart. Girls, of course, should keep their feet together. Overall, 
all, you should have an open and relaxed body posture. And please remember, body language is very, very important. Why? Because actions speak louder than words. You may say one thing, but your body may convey something else. Remember to maintain open and relaxed body posture. And above all, smile. A smile says a lot. With that, I'll leave you. For now, until we meet again in some other session, goodbye.